Okay, good morning, folks. Uh, good morning, of course, if you're in the UK. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thanks for tuning in today. Good to see you all again. Uh, this is my week four as your guest analyst here on the 8CAP platform. So it's been an absolute uh, uh, pleasure being here and I'm um, looking forward to um, uh, today's session as well. Lots to talk about. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions now um, throughout the session, do drop them in. Um, I've now sorted out how to use the, the, the GoToWebinar platform so I can now read your questions. So do drop some questions. If you want me to look at anything in particular, uh, please do just uh, uh, jot it in there and if we've got time um, we'll have a little look as well. Just a brief um, word about who I am just in case you do not know. Uh, my name is Andrew Lockwood. You may have seen me on on the YouTube, I think I've got 350,000 followers or something like that out there at the moment. I'm the head coach and mentor at ForexSignals.com, uh, partnering brokers, uh, partnering uh, with ACAT, um, uh, the broker, which is why I've been invited on. Um, and we basically run live trading rooms and uh, live streams uh, throughout the trading week, doing pretty much, pretty much what I'm doing now. Um, but we do this uh, regularly throughout the trading day. If you want to ever take part in that? You can head over to forexsignals.com and I think this week for you guys, I think they've set up um, a discount for you, 50% discount or something. If they haven't, um, well, come speak to me, uh, speak to uh, you guys at ACAP and we'll get that sorted out for you. All right, enough of that. Um, so yeah, my style uh, of trading, just so you know what it is. Basically, I am uh, probably a Forex trader. If you haven't been following me for the last uh, few, uh, few sessions, I'm predominantly a Forex trader. I started my trading career many years ago in the trading pits. You'll see my Colored jackets behind me there. We used to be shouting and screaming, yelling at people all day long, throwing around millions of dollars on a daily basis. Came onto the screen in 2005, lost a shed load of money in 2005, 2006. Um, re educated myself in a whole different way of trading, and I've been trading basically uh, ever since. Moved into the education space about six years ago to help aspiring traders as well. But basically, trading since I left school at the age of 18. And you can tell by looking at this face, that's quite a few years ago. Um, so my trading style predominantly is Forex. And I chose Forex really uh, because the edge that I used to have in the trading pits had gone and I had to find a new edge and the Forex market gave me the edge just with one simple sort of methodology, if you like. Trading um, Forex is two dimensional. Um, you've got one economy against another economy, one currency against another currency. And I think there's an edge there by looking at anomalies between the two. You buy a strong one, you sell a weak one. Um, and vice versa, if you think it's going down, you sell a weak one and you buy a strong one. And I use this trading tool, which I had coded back over 10 years ago now uh, to assist me uh, in this. Um, so, yeah, this is basically what I use. It's my momentum meter. It tells me what is going on um, in the markets. What I'll do now is I just have a quick overview of what is going on in the markets. Um, and then we'll talk a bit more about my trading strategy, my trading style. And I'll also try and put out some live trades on a lower time frame chart now, predominantly. Um, I'm normally on a higher time frame chart. I normally look at the um, normally you don't go much lower than the one hour um, uh, time period. Uh, prefer, to, prefer now, to be honest, um, the higher time frame than that as well, four hour and the daily. Um, but for the sake of this today, we'll maybe drill it right down so if we can pull out um, an odd uh, trade here or there. But as we know, as traders, uh, there's not one trade that's going to make you or break you. Trading is all about the law of large numbers. You know, no one trade should make the week and no one trade should lose the week um so don't be putting money on the trades that i do it's just an example of how i trade don't come here expecting me to uh, pay the bills for the weekend unfortunately that is not uh, trading as i briefly what's been happening over the last time since we last spoke um well of course we've had the um, rbnz uh, they moved their interest rates last night that's the new zealand um currency and um and often as you see when you see these uh uh, rate moves. Let's just look here. I just want to pull up the New Zealand dollar actually while I'm on the subject of the New Zealand dollar. This is a classic case of um, of buy the rumor, sell the fact. And this is let me just pull that up to the uh, to the uh, four hour chart. Actually, this is the one hour chart. So when the announcement came that the uh, RBNZ were going to move their interest rates by half a percent, uh, you had this big big reaction which to me was a bit of a surprise because the markets were really expecting a 50 basis point move. I think what drove that higher um, was the fact that Governor Orr and the central bank governor there basically indicated that there are more hikes along the way. But often is the case when it comes to trading the news 
and it's a strategy that literally I used to trade many years ago, but stopped it now because I don't spend all my time in front of the news, but buy the rumor, sell the fact. You know, often you'll see the knee-jerk reaction and the pursuing hours, normally two or three hours afterwards, generally the market has retraced back to the to where the um to where the uh, you know market was before the announcement. And this is happening again here. It happens multiple times if you ever trade non-farm payroll. That was the strategy. In fact, you know, 30 minutes before a big release like non-farm payroll, mark where the market is, it'll be back there an hour after the news release. Um, that was a strategy I used to, I mean, she used to make quite a lot of money out of that actually. Um, as I, said, I don't trade it so much these days because I'm not always there at the news. Um, but this is happening at the moment now, the New Zealand dollar is coming under pressure um, as uh, we, as the markets digest that and everything sort of gets filtered out and all the, all the traders that were basically getting long into the RBNZ are now uh, taking their profits. But there's still some quite some bullish uh, momentum um, uh, in those in those commodity currencies. But what's been happening over the last week, if you have been following, and I'm just going to pull up the daily chart on my uh, momentum meter here, is that the dollar has been under significant weakness. So the dollar is the green line, yeah? And the green line represents the US dollar. Uh, the color coding is down here. If you've got a moment to look at that, you can see the different color coding. Um, it shows you basically, uh, you know, this little panel I had coded in, shows me the different time periods. So you can see, for example, the Aussie is low on all the different time periods. When I say low, this is a moving average. It's lagging indicator, yeah? It doesn't predict the future. It's worked on moving averages. If you did predict the future, there'll be a gazillionaire. Um, but uh, yeah, it just tells me where the money is flowing at the moment. And as a trend follower, I want to buy the strong and sell the weak, as you know. So the US dollar has been coming under significant pressure. Well, obvious question is why has the US dollar been coming under significant pressure? Well, if you've been following you know, the economies of the US, well, you'll know uh, pretty much the, um, let's, oops, have a look here. There we go. Let me just pull up this uh, screen uh, here. Um, where is he gone? Just pulling up the wrong screen there. All right, so if you noticed um, uh, the uh, US dollar 10 year yield, basically all commodity, all currencies, um, currency traders are looking at the yield, the bond yield of that particular uh, currency. And what you've seen here in the US was a big, big uh, rejection of the all important 3% zone in the US. So the dollar yield, I'm just putting up the four hour chart now. Okay, so this is the four hour chart. You'll see yields have been moving all the way up um, pretty much since, I don't know, well, since, we, in fact, if you go down to the, to the daily, you can see it clear, uh, more clearly, uh, pretty much since um, March of this year, when you had interest rates around the sort of 1.5 zone, we've had a big, big ascent uh, in the US yield. And that's basically been pulling up the US dollar. But we got to this 3% zone, okay, now, uh, if you know that the Fed are moving interest rates because inflation is going crazy at the moment across the developed world, we've got rampant inflation. I think we had 9% out in the UK last week. Uh, Kiwis are moving their interest rates again because of interest rates. They're all moving interest rates, all moving interest rates higher uh, to combat this sort of global inflation problem. Um, but even with the bond markets, any you know markets you look at, they seem to respect key levels of support and resistance. Naturally, 3% is a level that it's got, you know, it's, it's, it's there on people's radars. It's people, you know, buying bonds are looking or buying or selling bonds are looking at 3% where they will buy their bonds back. Bonds and yields go in opposite directions, of course. We had a bit of a clue with um, one of these infamous patterns that I love to use in my, um, in one of my strategies, which is an end of day strategy. It's a naked trading strategy, it's called. Uh, that's what I called it. Um, I called it naked because I basically take out all the all the indicators and so forth, and it's just naked, stripped it out of everything else apart from pure price action at support and resistance, of course. Uh, you have this bearish pattern here at this level of 3%. That was a clue there, right off the bat there, that this interest rate market um, was in for a bit of a pullback. And since then, or at the high 3.2, we've now seen a drop down to 2.7. That's almost a half percent drop in interest rates. Well, that's reflected in the US dollar. This is the dollar index. The dollar index is an index against the top 10, um, uh, top six uh, major currencies, and the dollar has been driving lower as well. We actually got back into a key level of um, support. You have to go out really to the weekly and the monthly uh, to see uh, where that support was. But if, in fact, if I put up the monthly chart now, uh, you'll see the monthly level that we 
um, respected back from this zone back here, which was that, where was that? That was July 2016. Anyone that tells you technical analysis is, is, is flawed, well, just spend some time looking back at charts. Why is this bond market, uh, why is this DAX, um, DAX, the DXY, uh, stalled um, at this level? Because it did five years ago, six years ago. It's a key level of support. So the dollar now has taken a big, big um, retrace uh, from those highs. In fact, it's pulled back now almost 2.5% uh, from those highs. So the dollar is under pressure. And we're seeing some strength now coming into other currencies. Remember, it's all about buying strong and um, and, and selling weak. That's why we love to uh, trade the forex markets because it gives us that edge. And back to the momentum meter. Well, if the dollar has been coming weaker, what's been going stronger? Well, I'll tell you what's been going stronger. You've had the euro, this blue line. You've had the British pound. You've had the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. These commodity currencies, yep, yeah, down here. Aussie, CAD, New Zealand. You don't really want to be trading those at the moment against the US dollar for an edge because there's no real edge because they're all coming down lower together. See my point? Does that make sense? If markets are all moving in the same direction, there's no real edge. You want to be taking an edge where one is moving one way and the other is moving the other way. So basically the, the opportunities have been in the pound, have been in uh, and in the euro. And in fact, if you watch my um, event with you guys last week, uh, I spoke to you about um, a key um, a key sort of turning point that you could have seen in the in the pound. In fact, uh, this is just uh, stalling here on uh, this platform. I'll just go back to, there you go. is that gonna let me do that? Yeah, there you go. Um, so if we look here on the on the pound, again, what's this little pattern here? I've just mentioned it a moment ago on the bonds. It's a bullish engulfer. It happens to be at a weekly um, level of support. That was a clue. I called it here on the on the eight cap um, uh, event. This, this is a clue that the pound is now going to uh, retrace higher. And that's exactly what has happened. If you follow that trading strategy, which we teach, I teach, you would have been buying here. Your first profit target would have been out at uh, 124.80. Um, and you'll still be in second half of the trade now with a TP2 up there at 126. So the bullish momentum is still here with the British pound. British, British I'll start that again. British pound is getting stronger. Um, and the US dollar is getting weaker. So now as an intraday trend follower, what do I want to do? I want to basically get into that trend, but I'm not going to buy the tops of those candles. I'm not going to buy or sell the bottoms of candles. I like to get in on a pullback. So getting into this little bit of a pullback now, we're putting back right into this key level of support. There's mostly a trade setting up about now. I wouldn't be too, too surprised. And please don't take this now with your own real money, maybe chuck on a demo account or something. I wouldn't be too surprised at all to see this level here down at 124.75 act as support with a trend continuation with the British pound higher um, as the uh, as the US dollar um, continues to weaken up. OK, so uh, we're seeing a bit of a strength coming into that. Now, the only thing to be concerned about, and this is why I don't want you to do this now with any of your own real money, um, because tonight we do have a big announcement out of the uh, of the, uh, uh, the Fed, the Open Market Committee, Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC got the minutes of their last meeting um, and there has been a little bit of a maybe a dovish tone coming out of the uh, of the of the of the uh, speakers as they've been sort of hitting the news wires um you know so the you know if the if the minutes become a little bit more dovish then you can maybe see the um you know the dollar come under um uh, under pressure but if indeed the minutes are really hawkish that means bullish it means more probability of rates going up quicker and faster um, and sooner, um, then um, you, then you're going to see this trade, um, you know, uh, go right against you pretty quickly um, as the dollar maybe resumes its uh, strength. Um, but for me at the moment, uh, this is must be not a bad little setup. Uh, always like to buy a pullback, buy a pullback into previous level of structure. This is where we rolled off before. So this, I think, um, is an important level. In fact, so much so, because I'm streaming in a minute to my own crowd, um, I'm going to be uh, looking at that as a potential uh, trade setup for them. But remember, we've got the FOMC out. Um, but the clue was there, as I said, in that big sort of um, pattern there at the bottom, daily um, pattern there. If you're struggling on the lower time frame charts, nothing wrong with cranking up to the higher time frame charts. You're going to trade less. That is not a problem. Most people fail because they trade too much. I'll tell you that now. I've been doing it for 35 years, um, or more than that now, is it 35? Gosh, yeah, about that. Um, scary. Um, I, I've seen most people fail 
not only in the trading pits, uh, but also in the, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the live environment, just by over trading. So cranking it up to the higher time frame charts, taking less trades is often the better thing to do. You might think it's boring. I don't care about boredom. I've still got the kids to put through school. So um, that's all I'm uh, concerned about is making a profit, not the excitement. The only have the excitement, I might put some money on the, on the football, um, which uh, I would have lost on the weekend if I had done that, which I didn't do. So yeah, so the pound is looking uh, reasonably uh, good against the dollar. As I said, the euro is also uh, looking, um, that's my, just getting a, I'm getting a signal here in the Aussie New Zealand. I'll look at that in a minute. Um, same thing here in the um, in the euro against the uh, against the dollar. Okay, we've been in a nice solid uptrend. You never want to buy the tops of these trends. You never want to be buying. We just want to wait for the pullback. We're pulling back. This may pull back a little bit more. This is the moment. What do we have here? It's about a it's about um uh, 80 pip pullback. I mean a 280R pullback. I love a 280R pullback uh, and a 280R stop. If you're struggling, try that out. 280R, 280R, 280R pullback, 280R stop, 280R profit target with a trend. Um, you can do a lot worse than that. Um, I think this is going to find some support in here at 106.25. So you're not far from support now. So buying into this pullback, you're going to have stops below here for trend continuation. Um, you know, and your next target would have been up there at 107, uh, 107.90. So you get a decent risk reward by buying um, at around this uh, around this level. You might have a 80 or 90 pip stop, you're going to have maybe 120 pip profit target. I'd like to take trades minimum one to one. Doesn't matter if it's a, a one to one, that's okay. Don't take trades less than one to one unless I'm trading my other naked strategy, which is a couple of exits. Um, uh, we got a Ollie says it's good to be here. Thank you, Ollie. Good to have you here. Are you the only one here? Is this you and me? Is it just an intimate? Oh, no, there's a few others in the room. There you go. I'll tell you what, guys, do us a favor. So it's not so lonely me doing this. Just let me know where you're coming in from. Just say, hi, I'm from where you're from, and let me know where you're coming in from. I don't know where I'm beaming around the world on this one. Uh, so just uh, say hello, and um, I'll even give you a shout out. Uh, so the euro dollar is uh, looking uh, reasonably um, um, strong with the dollar weakness. So as I alluded to a moment ago, I do have two trending uh strategies but when i trade and traded very actively and in fact i noticed there's a, someone trying to co um copy my youtube channel yesterday i noticed someone had done a review on this very strategy uh he didn't you know he's got he did a thousand trades and he got a 62 percent return i don't know if he's right or not um but it's nice to see someone else taking my strategy seriously um uh but one of the strategies i like to use is a basic trend following strategy but have a look at that now to see if there are any setups Again, I don't uh, know if the markets are going to pull back or whether they're going to um, uh, just have a pullback or reversal. We never know that when we're trading, do we? We don't know if it's a pullback or if it's reversal. I use simple price action. Don't need all those oscillators for me. Lost a lot of money in 2005, 2006 doing all that. Didn't really understand them anyway. Um, but I just basically use simple price action. And I use that in terms of engulfing patterns, bullish engulfers, bearish engulfers. Um, uh, where's my drawing tool? Let's have a look here if it's over here. Here we go. Is it over here? Might make it easy if I can draw on the screen. Did you hear that snorting in the background? Please ignore it. It's my pug he's sitting here beside me. Hasn't had his walk yet. So he's getting a little bit, uh, little bit anxious um, for his walk. And he will get a walk later, I promise you, but not uh, just at the moment. Uh, so this is basically what I am uh, looking at. OK, just so you know, and you can maybe take this away and start playing with this this afternoon or wherever you are in the world. Okay, We never know uh, when the markets are in a trend and you have the pullback. We never know if that is going to be a pullback or whether it's going to be uh, a reversal taking us all the way lower, like this one here. Obviously, Aussie New Zealand, because um, that was the obviously the uh, I don't know what happened there. That was yeah, that was the uh, the hike. <clears throat> I'm not surprised. Why, why is that so surprising? Oh, I wasn't trading at that time of night, but there you go. Um, we never know at the time whether it's a pullback or a reversal. Um, but I do know when I see a pullback on an uptrend with a bearish candle like this um, into my moving averages, and then I see a following candle that's basically engulfs the previous candle, shows me that this pullback with this little red candle here, well, it's most probably, it's most. this is a red candle, we color it in. 
um, it's most probably a pullback and the trend is going to continue in the direction of the trend. So I basically use that same type of thing on a on an engulfing pattern on a, on a pin bar, for example. Now, if you're seeing uh, a market that's trending up and it's moving up, then you see this type of candle here where the sellers push the market lower. But then the buyers come in and we end up closing up at the top of the of the candle close. Well, that shows you that the buyers are still in control of that trend. Yeah. And off we go again. Very simple. Yeah. Very simple. Simple set of rules is all you need. And this basic tool does it all for me, really. Uh, so you can use uh, something like this. You can get these free. You don't have to come over to the site. It's not a not a not a sales pitch here. You can get these free on on uh, on uh, Trading View and, and the like. Um, but it's well worth having a look at. I'm just going to turn it on now. I'm going to uh, look to search for engulfers and pin bars. The fake out pattern is something that I designed myself. I haven't copyrighted it, but it's my own fake out pattern. It comprises of three candles. Um, that's just part of another thing that I've uh, got in my tool bag um, for reversals. Um, and I look at the 15 minute and the five minute uh, for you guys now just to see if there's anything Yay. coming up. And if there is, um, we will see if we can take a trade. So what we've got here is a pound New Zealand on the 15 minute. Now, this is a trend following strategy. OK, um, we've got uh, four minutes before the next. I've got five minutes on here. Yeah, I've got five minutes. Let's have a look at that one to see if that is a trade. So this is how I'd analyze the markets. OK, so first of all, I want to look at the higher time frame chart. OK, the higher time frame chart on here would basically be a we're in a downtrend okay we've got a downtrend we've got to pull back into the 15 minute uh, five minute uh, there's mostly a little trade coming in here we've got a little pin bar in here that shows this pullback in here i mean it's not ideal because it's it's just this pin bar i want to see it on one pin bar so this is not a classic entry for me at all i want to see it on the one pin bar you had this pin bar in an uptrend i want to see you know i want to see the the trend in that particular direction it's not just taking any pin bar or any engulfer I want to see the trend. I want to see the pin bar in that trend and then take it on the base of that pin bar. This has had too much of a consolidation on the way up. So that pin bar up there doesn't actually uh, mean anything. So that is not a trade setup for me. So I won't be taking uh, that one. Just the way it is, guys. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to be forcing trades uh, for the sake of it. I only want to take the high probability trades, especially if I'm trading on the one hour and the four hour. I'm quite happy not to trade in the day. I'm quite happy to set my hands. You know, do something else. Um, we, so I'll do. I'll just this. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to trade this. But I'm just going to pop up the one minute, um, so you can see um, if there's any analysis coming up. I won't take the one minute chart, but I've got one minute engulfer. Let's just have a look and see what it's pulled up here. Uh, again, this is a bearish pattern. The trend is up. We're not taking that trade. Very simple. Not taking it. Close it down. That's why I don't want to do the one minute because they're going to be popping up every five seconds well, every minute in fact <laughs> oddly enough um but um uh daily is gone what have we got there dailies are great daily pin bar on the uh, pound cad now daily pin bar on the pound cad no not for trend continuation we're using that one um and we've got a daily on the cad yen no again it's a bearish with the trend Although you did have a bearish pin bar at the top here, which could have been one of my day trading naked setups at the top there. Can't remember if you took that one in the room. I don't know if we took that or not, but it was a, certainly a pattern up there. New high pin bar, the trend down. I have to check whether we took that or not. Maybe, maybe we did. But you don't take them anywhere. You have to take them at levels of support and resistance and so forth. Just while I'm on this screen, um, just a word of advice, guys. If you are struggling with your trading, um, and you seem to be giving back all the time more than you're losing, than more than you're making, you've got to consider risk on each and every trade that you do. It really is important. I mean, um, most people blow up trading accounts, even if you're trying to do a prop challenge or you're trading your own money. Most people blow up trading accounts uh, because they don't control their risk. You know, it doesn't matter where your stop is in Forex or any trading, you know, you shouldn't be losing more than a predetermined amount. You can go to anywhere you want to find out different people's opinions on that. You know, for me, uh, my active trading life you know i'm not risking more than a quarter percent on the trading account um on any one trade um depending of course on the strategy um but if you want to risk half percent it's mostly be okay anything above half percent i think you're you know you're going to be i've seen my i've had myself 12 trades on the bounce losing you know i'm risking one percent or 12 percent down yeah you know, i've got to make almost 25 percent to get back to where i was before that little bad run came in 
hard to recover from a 12% drawdown. Um, so I like to, you know, keep it, um, you know, keep the law of large numbers in focus. Let's have a quick look then at what's been pulled up here in the um, in these ones. Um, uh, just in case there might be a trade setup. Aussie Swiss, Aussie Swiss bullish pin at support. You could take a reversal on there if you're a five minute reversal trader. Not for me, thank you very much. Um, and pound CAD. No, nothing going on there really. We're not in a downtrend, are we? This is all over the blooming shop. That's why I don't like the five minute chart so much. I mean, if you, it's not in a trend, is it? Five minute chart, we're flat. You don't be taking trend continuation trades in uh, that type of environment for me anyway. Uh, as I said a moment ago, uh, you know, if, you, if you're controlling risk on each trade, uh, you should be, you know, you, so you put your percentage in there, for example, you turn it on and um, you can have your, you know, you put your profit targets in and your stop levels in and so forth. And, you can put, uh, make it a you know, pending order so you can move your, um, obviously that's not going to work because it's going to be below the market. So I might have a buy order there, switch to buy. And so it works out the whole um, uh, yeah, risk for me. So I'm only risking 1%. It's going to work out the lot size on this account. Um, it's uh, 0.31 of a lot. And of course, uh, my maximum loss in this account, which is about a $25,000 account. In fact, this account is actually a demo account. Uh, so I could take that trade. Um, but um, no point just for the sake of it, but this will uh, allow me to um, to uh, uh, work out position size accordingly. And of course, if you want to have two profit targets as well, um, you know, which you can't really do on MT4 on the offset, but you can with this tool. It works out the lot size, it splits into two and places two trades. So this is, uh, for example, um, you know, a, um, a demo account. So I could place that now, but there's no point. That's just where it is at the moment. Okay, folks, well, that's almost up my time. Okay, let's have a look then. Here we go. So we've got Sue from Melbourne. I've just been talking to your to ACAT colleagues um, in Melbourne. It sounds lovely down there at the moment. Uh, thank you for tuning in, Susan. Good to see you. Uh, Stuart uh, Salon um, is in Australia as well. Gosh, it's all the Aussies. Um, uh, Brian from Aussie as well. Good to see you in the room. Thanks for tuning in today, Brian Alata. Um, we've got uh, Diana Jokson Kamustakar from the Philippines. Um, uh, my wife is from the Philippines, Diana, um, so there you go, hope you're well, Inga. Derecho Kanan Kalawa, Into, Into. Hi, New Zealand, we've got uh, Lita, uh, New Zealand, we've got um, Ellis Hibbard from the Gold Coast in Australia. So what time you got in Australia now? It is in Melbourne, you are nine hours ahead of me now, so it's seven, half past seven for you guys, so thanks for tuning in at half past seven in your evening. Um, uh, Ollie uh, is there as well. Uh, is your room called Forex Signal? ForexSignal.com, Susan, that's all right. Um, and we've got Par F from Sweden. And we've got um, Hello from Finland, says Alexandra Presentra. Well, good to see we've got a whole bunch of um, a variety of, geographically of members uh, of uh, people joining in. Um, I'm really uh, grateful for that. Thanks for your interaction with me. Um, can I ask a question? If I can, now you've got, now you've got your, now you've come out um, and chatting. Um, can I say, can I ask a question here? Um, can you just give me a, a positive, so six months experience, six months trading experience above or below, just so I can have a clue um, of where the sort of, you know, the, the type of people we're pitching to here at the moment. So have you got more than six months or less than six months? I'd love to see that. I think it's good information. Um, basically, so it helps us certainly and me and the fellow contributors that you're going to have here over the next few weeks um, and months. Um, so we know where, basically where to sort of pitch the level of this content, because obviously we want to make it um, worthwhile for everyone. Um, and if it's just too basic, then we will crank it up. And if it's just too advanced, we'll crank it down. Um, next week, we've got a great guy um, coming in, Stuart McPay. He's an Australian chap as well, of course. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, his contributions. So we've got above Stuart, Don's above, um, is that is Meds above, Susan's above, 15 years, but still breaking even. Okay, Susan, yeah. Um, can I give you a bit of advice if you're still breaking even after six, uh, after, all, after all that time? Get yourself a very simple strategy, a very simple strategy. You can use a combination of what I just mentioned there. Run it through some vigorous backtesting. The chances are you're breaking even, Susan, and I mean this with all, you know, um, all respect, chances are you're breaking even, not because of the strategy. 
chance are you're breaking even because you don't understand the strategy and you'll mostly get trading um uh you know with with emotions um uh, as, as many most of us do i mean uh, you know it's certainly you know i i'm not you know i'm not made in stone i have emotions as well um but the best thing about giving a strategy and back testing it is it really does help control those emotions because if you've seen it all happen before you're not going to get all frustrated when you see it happen in real life and that's where most people fail uh, anyway happy to um to give you that advice we've got um so look here we've got uh, above from raymond lim that's good brian larter one year still learning working uh, full time don't get complicated don't get complicated too soon almost a year um okay so so it's good we've only ellis is the only one really of less than six months experience um ellis, was this too complicated for you do you think um was it too complicated okay well done susan well try that out and i think you'll be you know i think you'll be um honestly it's not a strategy susan so i'd look forward to you know maybe kept touch base somewhere else in the world you know you can uh, buzz me up and uh, you can, well you, i don't want to come on here and sales pitch that's not what i do here um, but if you want to come to forex signals there is a seven day free trial you can take it out and see what we've got to do for free if you don't want to stay you don't have to stay it's not a problem um but it's okay if you want to come over if you if anyone wants to come over you can say hello to me well, I'll order out the red carpet for you. There you go. Um, right, folks, I've well, I've gone well over time. Sorry about that, Mr. Production team, but it's good to have the interaction here in the room. As I say, it's been a great pleasure having um, uh, being being on the ch uh, ACAP channel here. I really do appreciate them asking me along. Uh, we're great partners, um, ACAP and ourselves. So it's great working with them. One of the best brokers I have seen out there. As you know, if you haven't already explored, you've got a fantastic um, array of trading entities you've got all the this is the eight cap platform you've got all the um all the um all the um the, the cryptos you can trade as well i think they're the market leader now in the crypto you got, you got all the there's the different sets i had all uh, laid it up here you got all the uh, different sets you got the uh crypto high caps my cryptos i don't trade yeah, these are my crypto look at all these cryptos you got in there um lots of that stuff there if you are these type of people someone mentioned it a moment ago that you can only um uh you know that you're working full time well if you're working full time of course we can trade the cryptos over the weekend and at the end of the day if you know what you're doing uh a chart's a chart is a chart so if you can make money on a euro dollar following a chart on a one hour time frame using the same analysis you should not have you know a massive issue i don't know what the spreads are like on some of these altcoins but um you know there's opportunities for you there as well so um you know, do make sure you explore all the trading entities uh, that uh, ACAP here have to offer. Uh, what is, what are we trading there? What's that trading at the moment? So we've got, uh, see, I mean, not too bad spreads in there. Let me just close that down. Yeah, I mean, it's all all looking at, they're pretty tight. Pretty tight spreads. Bitcoin. What have you got on Bitcoin, the spread there? I mean, that's tight. That's a tight spread for trading CFD Bitcoin. You've got a lot of opportunity in there. If you know, don't go and trade it now without uh, knowing what you're doing. If you if you're not trading, but um, um, you know, it's certainly I won't trade it now because this is a, a live account I have here, <laughs> so I'm not going to place any trades here. But um, you know, do go and check it out. Okay, thanks very much indeed, Ollie. Hopefully, are you found it useful? Thanks indeed, ACAP, for having me on. Um, next week, I think Monday and Tuesday, Monday and Wednesday, I think um, uh, they're doing a reset. Stuart McFay, you may have known him as a well-known uh, trader in the markets. He's been around for a long time. Um, he's going to be your guest analyst coming up uh, for the month of June. So I'm super excited to see what he has uh, to offer and the advice uh, analysis that he can give as well. So I look forward to that. Thanks, guys. Pleasure being with you. See you again sometime, I am sure.